Good morning, everyone. It's February 10th, 2021. I'm Kimberly Jolly from Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube. Super, super, super excited to be here today. I've been stitching like crazy. We've got lots of stitch alongs coming up, lots of stuff so that you can pick what um, you think fits best with your schedule. Um, so super, super excited. We're gonna start off today with the prim and proper stitch along that's gonna start March 3rd. It's gonna be a five part series. The pattern is by Lori Holt. So where it says week one, March 3rd, that's when you would be done. So the first week will be a lot because it's that top row. The second week will be finishing the left side the fourth week will be kind of the bottom of the pod and the bottom of the border. The fifth week is the right border. And then I skipped week three, but whatever. <laughs> That's about how my life is. So I really hope that you guys join us for that. There's obviously a quilt that goes with that that we did a sew along for. And that has been really successful and I haven't made the quilt yet, but I might in the future with different fabric. But I wanna kinda of show it to you and kinda of show you some different things and give you some ideas. So this one is our sample. It was stitched by Cheryl. It was finished by Lori. And we have all of this information in a blog on the finishing. So this is just a, it's actually on the back of the pattern, sorry. So um, we finish, all the finishing information is right here on the pattern and Lori painted it. And this is her prim fabric collection. This is her vintage trim. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the different options with this. So this is the pattern. It's available as a paper pattern. It will be a PDF in six months. But for right now, it's just a paper pattern. And on the back, we give you our floss selections and DMC. So if you've been stitching with us, we started with this box, we did Prim Village. After Prim Village, we did Prim Stitch Series. And now we have Prim and Proper. So if you have joined us for that, you don't have to buy any floss because it's all right there. And um, if you wanna use DMC, you can use DMC. Now, of course, you could totally customize this for your house and do any kind of colors you want. I'm gonna stitch um, with the RF Floss box because I already have it and it will match all the other things I've done. So for fabric options, I've got a few ideas. This first one is Prim Vintage Cloth. So it's VC 25-Prim. This is 25 count even weave. So that would equate to 12 and a half 12.5 Ada, so a little bit bigger. So that's one option. And that fabric is by Lori Holt and we do have it in stock. Now I'm gonna stitch on this fabric, which is by Witchell. It is called Hand Dyed Jobelin Ada in Sandcastle. Now I picked this in January and we ordered it in January and we thought we would have it in time and they said when we checked on it this week that it would be four to six weeks four to six months but i'm going to stitch on it anyway because i like it but my suggestion would be is if you're in the witchell club and you've been getting the basics just pick something you already have you just want to do some type of floss toss so for example this is brown you want to make sure that this part is going to pop out so i would just when you pull, just pull what you have in your stash and you just pull some spools out and just see, does it look good? Do I think this is gonna pop out? I think it'll be fine. But that's what I would do is just to make sure it's in the same colorway because if you had like a cool fabric and warm threads, it wouldn't match. So that's kind of what I did to pick mine is just put some of the threads on here to make sure it looks good, that looks good to me. And I actually had this in my stash. That's why I'm using it. So I feel like if you've been sewing along with us, you can just pull fabric from your stash, buy the pattern, and if you've done the other sew alongs, you've already got the thread and you can just ignore that I, I ripped that off. <laughs> um, and of course we will have this fabric later. It's called Sandcastle, I apologize. Um, but that's where we're at. And I think um, when I start, I'm gonna go all the way across 
and then that'll probably be my first week and that's gonna be March 3rd but then after that one thing I probably will do is I will probably go through and finish this just to make sure that I complete that circle and then kind of fill in so even though it says to go you know by week by week I probably with my OCD will probably do the circle and I love these colors I think it's gonna be great to have all three of those pieces match so let me know if you have any questions on fabric or anything like that and this is a super simple finishing that you could do at home this is just a wooden piece um, from the unfinished wood section I think at Hobby Lobby but we are putting all of the finishing ideas on our patterns going forward so that there are no questions on it from bumble stitches is there enough to stitch prim and proper as well as prim stitch series from the box of rf loss no oh from the box of rf loss yes you might have to buy like if you run out of there's one color this little gray guy you might run out of that on prim stitch series let me show you, I ran out of it. So you might need more of 6730, but you won't need more of the other colors. If you look, like the orange is only used, or the little pumpkin harvest, it's used four times. One, two, three, four. You know, the pink, one, two, and then three so really it's really your browns and this green but you should have enough green it's just that one brown that you're going to run out of on prim stitch series and that was kind of the idea behind Lori designing this box is that it was rf floss it has a lot of yardage on it and so that's why she did so many patterns with it so you wouldn't have to go and keep buying stuff um it's a way to like use up everything you have and Lori is going to stitch along. She is still deciding her threads and she is going to stitch on a higher count fabric, like a size 36. And the reason why is she's, we've shown you this, which is 25 count. I'm gonna do Ada, so she's gonna do 36 counts so that you can see three different sizes, three different looks, um, just to give you, you know, just different ideas. You don't always have to use exactly what it comes with you can use your own thread, your own fabric. You can do whatever you want on our stitch alongs. We don't require you to, you know, do what we do. Just, you know, if you want to stitch along, great. Just get the pattern and we'll have fun. From Kathy Firth, is this the same as fabric as the previous Prim Lugana? It is. Now that piece before, that's what I thought Lily was going to ask me. Yeah. This piece of fabric, would not be enough to do both so you would have to get another piece um, of it or from your stash and you can see kind of i'll show you these together the 25 count is lighter than this and i had originally bought this piece of fabric at shepherd's bush in utah and had it in my stash and when i went to do this I had used up all of the lamb's wool and all of the beautiful beige I had, and this is what was left, so I thought, well, I'll just use this. Because I do think beautiful beige will be a good match. I think it will match better than lamb's wool, but I had none left. And I want to be cognizant of, you know, not buy, 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 you know, using what I have. From Kathy Achenbach, could you use a light fabric like an antique white? you could i think that it might not match as well because these are primitive fabric primitive primitive looking threads so if you did white it might not match so good just because you've got a lot of browns and it might it, i would do something that has at least a tint of cream or tan unless you want to do totally different colors because then you're working with yeah that would be my suggestion because if you look behind it, actually, if you look at these colors of thread, right, and then look at the sew by row that's right there, that might not really match. Okay. Uh, people are asking, where you got your shirt? Is it new? It looks lovely on you. <laughs> A 
Okay, so guys, y'all commented on my pink sweater the other day, and I loved it, and it made me feel so good, and I had to go to the mall this weekend because Emma is now like five, six, and she needed some new pants, but we didn't know, she had a gift certificate for $100 to Lululemon that she got at Christmas. Ooh. Well, she needed to get pants, and I said, well, you're not buying those online because I don't know the length, because she's also super, mm -hmm. her legs are taller than her top, if that makes sense, she's got really long legs. So I said, oh, well, we have to go to the mall because we're not buying the wrong Lululemon pants. <laughs> we gotta buy the same one, the right ones. And um, so we went to the mall and then we walked by uh, Talbot's and they had this and it's just like the pink one. And I thought, oh, I'll get it. So the only difference is like right here, these are kind of 80s. I was like roof stuff. I was like, when I put it on this morning, I was like, Ugh. it looks cute. It's okay. It's just. <laughs> But I liked the other one where it was flat. But no, I bought it because you guys liked that sweater and I thought, oh, okay, I need something. From Maria Migdalia Felger Ramos, can you mix aura floss with DMC if you, don't, if you do not have enough aura floss in hand? Thank yeah, you. I would. You could mix anything. Yeah. They are a slightly different, but I mean, nobody's gonna notice. Mm -hmm. uh, from Christine Jellum, I thought we were to start on March 3rd, but you said we need to be finished with the first part on March 3rd, which is correct. It's being finished on March 3rd is the correct one. Okay, from Carol Turner, are you using one or two strands of floss for the project? Okay, so I'm using 14 count Ada, and I'm using two strands. And basically, you would treat our floss just like you do DMC. And then from Vicki Harrod, will there be a floss pack for Here Comes Peter Cottontail? Yes, we're just waiting on some of the floss. It's already, I mean, we have some of the colors, not all, but we will have it soon. Sorry, what did you say? Okay, it's on the coming soon page if you want to sign up to be notified. But yes, it's ordered. Excellent. From Grateful Grammy, good morning, Sister Stitchers. I have a question for you all. How do you iron a piece stitched with silk? Have no idea. I, I would go to Jan Hicks Creates Floss Tube and comment, and she will answer. She's an expert on floss. To me, I would just iron it like normal. That's probably not the correct answer. So I would go to Jan Hicks Create and ask her because she really works a lot in silks. And um, so she's going to give you the correct answer. And then we've had some super chats coming in. First one was from Valeria Bauer for $19.99. And she put a little pair that's dancing that says, you are amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Valeria. And then our second super chat was from Dot Dot Goose Designs Denise for fifty dollars, and she says, "Happy Valentine's Day from me and Miss Gracie." X O X O X O X's. Thank you. I hope I said the right amount of XOs. Yeah, I can't <laughs> believe that uh, it is Sunday. Yeah, it's Valentine's Day, yeah. so I got to figure out what to get for my kids. Aww. I got to get them like a little stuffies. Aww. We kind of do it. Um, yeah, we gotta get like when they wake up, they'll have their little piles. So That's we gotta so figure out what stuff needs to get. Oh my goodness! From Kathy Birch, do you like Aura Floss better than DMC? I like that it is on the spool. That part I like, and I also feel like for me, it doesn't tangle. It doesn't um, knot up like DMC does. But I will say, someone who works here has the opposite experience. Mm. Um, but for me, I love the spools, and I love that when I'm done, I have a little um, shelf from Pottery Barn that I just put my leftover Aura Floss. It's easy to store. It costs more, but it's also a lot more yardage on it. So you have more more um, thread. So, but I like all thread. Uh, Tessa Thomas says, when is a sew along for your stitch by row coming up or did it pass already? I think sew by row. Sew by row. We're in the middle of it and I'm going to show it. We're on week five. And after this week, I think there's three left. And from Maria Migdalia, are the colors in the Aura Floss Prim box the same as the B Basics? I have the B Basics box. No, completely different. Okay. There might be a couple of crossovers, but mostly different. And a few people are asking if you and Kevin have any Valentine's Day plans or traditions. No. 
<laughs> we have been married 18 years, and he'll probably get me flowers. I'll mm. probably get him cookies, but no, we're probably not going to dinner. If we go to dinner, we'll probably take our kids. But Emma has, oh, let me tell you, my 13-year-old, she has plans like nothing. Like, no tomorrow. She was telling me, I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, her, her group of dance friends, there's six of them on the team. They're having a party. I'm like, okay, your dad can drop you off. And then she wants to see her best friend on set Sunday. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Okay, so we're gonna move to so we're gonna move to the Be Mind Stitch Along, and I'm gonna talk about what I did this week versus what I'm doing next week. It's a ton of stuff, so um, we will start with the calendar. Here is kind of what I've been doing. Get my book out, and I will just pull each bag. So this is today's stitch. So this is the monthly markings that Denise and I colored right here. Cheryl made the sample. Cheryl helped us with coloring it also. She stitched on Venetian stone linen. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> sorry, this is what I'm doing. So each month, the first week I do the aqua border. The second week I do the inside and the third week I do the outside border. That's gonna be for the entire year of 2021. The pattern is by heart and hand. So this week I did the heart. When I did the heart, I wasn't sure if I should do small stitches or big stitches on the back stitch. So Lily's gonna zoom in and show you what I did. I um, tried a couple of different things. So I did the stitch full. So I went from here to here, here to here, here to here. So I didn't do back stitches. I did more of a longer stitch. And so I, like on this arrow down here, this big long thing, I tried to do one stitch on that and then do the small pit stitches and it looked bad. So I just did half stitch, back stitch, half stitch, back stitch, half stitch, back stitch, and then it came out good. I tried a couple different ways just to see what I liked. This morning, I just did this right before we started. And today, I need to finish the whole outer border right here and right here. And then that will be done for the month of March, the month of February. We're in February, sorry, I cannot talk. So that is um, this week's and it's fun, it's cute. And in my bag, I literally, um, I literally just throw all my stuff in here. So I've got these on floss bitties, and I just throw them in there. I know that's a mess, but that's my life. That's about how I feel today, right there. That's good. So the next thing I worked on is in here. I've been using these little itty bitty boards. This is our free pattern, Stitches from the Heart. Um, this one you can download for free. And with this pattern, we have NPI colors and DMC colors. And we have a video called How to Finish the Stitches from the Heart Cross Stitch on how to put it into this pillow. And so I have been working with the silks. They have been great. I have really liked working with them. I used a label maker to put my little numbers on there. And I found that I just tried to do, once I started going, I tried to do all the same colors within it. So once I kind of got this done, I had a like a base point. So I try to do all the lights and then all the mediums, try to do all the colors at one time, which is why some of this pulls down. Because when I got here, I realized, oh, I have enough thread to keep going. So I kept going instead of stopping. So that's kind of how I'm doing that. I am finding that with this pattern, I do have to use the line keeper. I'm unable to like when I look at it, I can't really keep track of where I'm at. So the line keeper is like a must on this pattern. I don't use it on all my patterns. This one, I um, 
am. And let's see, stitches from the heart. On this one, I am using Antique White, which will 14 count. And I spent about five hours. So this will be this week and I gotta finish, I gotta do the bottom left. And then the week after I'll do the bottom right and it'll be all done. And so I literally just throw it in my bag. So that is my second one. My third one is kind of two in one. So what I did was Um, that photo down there that was in drawer seven. Okay, she's going to go grab it. So what I did was I went ahead and stitched the heart. Let me look at the color I used. Let's see. I used DMC 37, wait, 3831. And I just did this. I used two strands. I tried to use four strands just to see how it would look and it did not look good. And then when I stitched it, I thought, you know, the it doesn't really pop out. Mm -hmm. So I pulled some chalk, mm -hmm. um, chalk thread by Gentle Arts that I just had in my, I mean, it was just like sitting, I mean, I have it. So I just did like around here. And I mean, it's not like right here, it's not as perfect. Like it's not exact. I kind of just, winged it. So I'm going to show you the back and I just stitched this and I just tried to carry it under as much as I could and hope that it won't come out. Now you could put some kind of fabric on here, but I just, I didn't want to. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did. And I'm going to show you a design that Cody came up with, and this is what you could do. So this took me three hours. So I thought, okay, that's enough for this week. Because, I mean, with all the other stitching. So I might add this, which is part of the pattern I'm about to show you, and I might add this. I'm not really sure, but this is, a you know, what you could do by using a pattern that I'm about to show you. So let's see. And there's also a heart on the other side. I only did one side. One side's good. So the next pattern is just my type. And I am using color and cotton. And you can see I just throw it in there on my alpha bitties. Not alpha bitties, what are these called? Floss bitties. Floss bitties, sorry. All the I dropped some thread. Okay, hold on. Let me get it before I run over it. Do, 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 picking up thread music. Okay, so this one I spent a ton of time on. This is our Just My Type pattern by It's So Emma. And fabric, um, kind of how we finish the, uh, the sample and everything's on the back. It is color. So let me turn to the page it's on real quick. Let's see, page four. Okay, so this took me nine hours. So this was, this took forever. So then I thought, I don't think I want to redo that again on the bag. So what I did is I started in the center and I did this. And then I did the outline of the part the outline of the bird, the wing, and then I started, I did the same thing. I just outlined everything all the way down. When I got here, I counted from here to here to make sure I was in the right spot. Then I filled in. And then I came back and just wanted to make sure that this all lined up. So I just did all the pink. And then on a different day, when I had extra time, I added all this because I was looking on Facebook and someone had started the typewriter and oh my gosh, that is so much work. And I thought, you know, I have extra time. I'm gonna go ahead and just put, I'll show you the, I just thought, let me get ahead. So this week I'm gonna finish this off, but I am going to try to maybe outline the typewriter or something. 
so that when I go somewhere and I'm just sitting in the car, I can just fill in because it's a great fill in. Now this is my first time working with Color and Cotton and I have loved it. I think it's great. It's very soft and I like that it has eight yards instead of five. It fits just fine on my floss bitties. And I just put the little tag on the back side. This is the back side. And then I can still see my front. So I have, I thought it was great. Uh, I think it's just as good as any other. I like it. And um, I do like this tusk. I was not sure how it was going to look right here. And it looks good. And I am stitching on Graceful Gray by Witchell. And I'm using 14 count. So I love this one. This is probably one of my favorites I've done because it doesn't look like any other design out there. It's very original and I love it. So this week I've just got to, I'm going to start this big heart. I've got the stamp and then I am going to try to outline part. I'm not going to do the entire, I don't think I'll have time to do the entire um, typewriter, but I will do a lot. And then let's see, the next one is trucking along. This is the series by Priscilla and Chelsea. And I've already finished March. So I've got February, April, and May left. Let me see where we're at in my book, page nine. Okay, so I'm stitching on chalkboard black. And it took me... I've spent about five hours on this. So what I did is I did this top part. And that took me three hours, which is not, not too bad. But then I had some extra time. I had a lot of extra time. So I went and added this so that this week I wouldn't have as much. This week I'm going to do the little love notes right here and just kind of right there. Just do a little bit right here. This one's really pretty. I like the, the floss. It is classic color works and I like the colors. And you can see that that, see how bright that looks? But when you stitch it in, it just changes color on that black. It doesn't pop, it doesn't, it's not as fluorescent. So, that is my next one. And then this one, oh, this is, uh, if you are in the club and you wanna see the next pattern, class, Country Cottage Needleworks showed April on Facebook, Instagram yesterday. So this is the Country Cottage Needleworks series called Sampler of the Month. And this was, um, something I'm doing each month and this week I worked on it twice and did the top the middle and then this week I'll do the bottom and it will be done the only change I made is on her Y's she has an empty stitch right here and on all of her patterns I add that stitch because it gets on my nerves that it's like that little missing I can't stand it <laughs> so this week I just have to do the bottom and this is beautiful beige I love the little cakes. I know, they're cute, right? They're, they're like part. little wedding cakes. And then March, I'll do in March. And then April, she showed. So um, if you're in the club, you've already gotten March. She's shipping April in the next week or two. So as soon as we get it, we will ship it out to you if you're in the club. If not, you can buy the pattern online. And one thing I am doing, okay, let's talk about this. Several people emailed me with a great idea because I was struggling with the Pat Carson size 28 needles and I'm going to show you the difference so I bought some Bowen size 28 and I'm going to show you the difference and I have I'm doing better with the Bowen 28 mm. but I'm going to show you why or why I think I'm doing better okay so these are Pat Carson 28 Okay, so if you look, the Pat Carson is on the bottom. It's a tiny bit. <laughs> they want to be friends. I think it's magnetized. It is. Okay, so 
Okay, I'm going to leave it there. So this one's, this is Bowen, 28. This is Pat Carson, 28. The way you can tell the difference is Pat Carson has gold on the edge. Mm -hmm. This one's a tiny bit longer, and what I was having trouble with was pulling it through. Like when I did this, it wasn't bending. So this one doesn't bend that much. This one is more pliable. So it bends more, so when you go through, I'm able to do that. Now, I'm gonna break these. I can already tell you I'm gonna break these, but I can go faster with these. They're just not gonna last as long as my Pat Carson. So that would be the difference, is that I can go faster with the Bowen. I don't think they're gonna last as long as the Pat Carson, but that is one thing that I, um, thank you everyone for emailing me and telling me to try the Bowen. And I will just put this one right here. And I'll know it's Pat Carson because it's gold. And I really, I like this one. I like this series. It's fun. Mm -hmm. The next one is, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. I love this one. This is Be My Valentine by Stitching with the Housewives. And oh my gosh, I got to show you all this. Okay. This took forever. So it took me four hours to do the white and I had some extra time. So after that, that day, when I finished at night, I filled in these reds and that took five hours. So I don't know if I either wrote the time down wrong or I was really distracted, <laughs> but I um, filled these in. And so this week I've got to fill in these two, which are red and these two, which are pink. And then just, I'll probably outline something on the inside, but I love this one. It's going to be so cute. I love it. And of course, it's Chalkboard Black by Witchell. And the, the one for this week that I haven't shown that I am gonna do this week is right here. It's also Stitching with the Housewives. Classic Color Works and weeks okay it's called delivering roses and i have changed the colors so let me go to my page okay i'm using bamboo licorice red jolly holly really tealy and blue coat red by weeks dye works so i this is what i think i'm going to use i have changed the colors and the reason i changed the colors is because i already had these these are left over from mm -hmm other things that Priscilla and Chelsea did and they kind of use the same colors over and over which is great because then I can just pull from my stash I don't really have to think I know they match because I've already used them in something mm -hmm. so that will be this week and there are these housewives happy hearts there's four and I picked three of them to do oh I switched the fabric is what Denise is telling me I forgot about that <laughs> Duh. Okay, so this fabric right here <laughs> is Aqua Dyed Effect, and this is not Aqua Dyed Effect. This nope. is Priscilla and Chelsea dyed it with Rit Dye. Evening Blue Rit Dye. Then they tea dyed it on top, but I, um, I already kind of started all of their stuff in black, so I'm just gonna keep it black because then it will all go together. So if I'm doing something in my house, I can put all their stuff next to each other. And I feel like if I move to aqua fabric at this point, then I would have to change my thread and I've already kind of got a thing going. So when, you, when I have it, my personality is when I have something it works, I stick with it. So that's one thing that I'm pretty stubborn about I don't know, this week I've been wondering why my daughter's so stubborn and it might be like, you know, her mother is. <laughs> um, but when I have something that works, I keep it. I don't change it. Because if it works, why change it? Why complicate your life? So I've already started with black. I'm going to keep with black. Keep with the thread I've already got. Glad Denise reminded me of that. Because I, I picked this out a while ago. I like how you braided your threads. Oh, I didn't. Somebody here did it. Oh, it looks nice. Someone here who did photos. Who did it? Sarah. Sarah. Mm. Sarah. 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 So Sarah did it. Yeah. No, I can't even braid hair. So I definitely cannot braid. Um, <laughs> I cannot braid hair. 
I cannot braid my daughter's hair. When when she first started dance, that was what I struggled with the most because, you know, you had to do your hair a certain way. Mm -hmm. And one year, one of the dance, they were like, you have to have a braid. But it's not just a regular braid. It's like an outer, inner something, something, yeah. French, something. I would show up at um, competitions and just be like, somebody braid her hair. And I just pay. Like, if I could get a high school kid to do it, I would pay him. If it was a mom, I'd just be like, okay, I'll buy you a drink later. Or get you a snack. <laughs> yes. It's Chick-fil-A or something. But I was like, I'm not going to learn now. Like, But now she just has to do a bun. She's 13. She knows how to do it. Her first dance competition for the year is next weekend. Oh, Woo. It's in Kyle, so that's right by work. So oh, I'm probably going to sneak over to work. Because why not? I need to work some more hours. Ooh. I was going to actually count how many hours I work in a week. And then I thought, no, you really shouldn't. Because on Sunday, I stitched eight hours. Like, over eight hours. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, yeah, I probably shouldn't. Probably not good for my mental health to know how many hours I really work. But I was watching the Super Bowl, so. Oh, there you go. Um, from Joella Brazil. Who designed Just My Type? It's such a pretty pattern. Cody. Go Cody. So she is an artist and she's a graphic designer. And so she draws it on the computer and then Sarah interprets it into cross stitch. But, but Cody is amazing. She does amazing like artwork and like, I don't know. She's artist. That's what you would call it, right? I mean, yeah, she's an she's artist. She's got a beautiful eye for design in many aspects. Yeah. Like all this right here. Yes. That's Cody. Yeah. From Carolyn Ponds, would Venetian stone be a good fabric for the prim and proper pattern? Yes, I think it would. Mm -hmm. I would, um, I'm going to compare it right now. I have it somewhere in here. Let me think of where I have it. I have it right here. Let's compare it and let's see. So this is Venetian stone Ada. And we'll put some floss on it. So let's just see. So that is going to be in the corner. And what's going to, what you need to stick out is this dark brown. So to me, it matches. This is going to be okay because it's within the star. Oh, so, so it's not touching the outside. So I think it'll be fine, except for right here. If you, if you think this will pop enough on here, the pot would be my only concern. I think it would match though. I think it would work. Let me put some other colors. It's definitely the right color family. Mm -hmm. And if you were concerned about, for example, this popping out, you could always do your pot in this mm -hmm. or this. You could reverse the pot colors and you could do darker down here and then lighter up here. You could also do a white pot. Oh, that would be cute. See, I'm pretending to be an artist right now. <laughs> I think it's like a, if anyone's seen Ratatouille, how Gusto says anyone can cook, I'm like, anyone can be an artist. I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch movies, so I don't ever know what she's talking That's about. Funny. It's a cute movie. Uh, from So Patty, will there be more projects using the Aurifil? I have not used it before. Yes. In Ooh. fact, I'm already planning Mania. And Denise and I yesterday took one of my very first cross stitches, which was Quaker Pumpkin. And we took the three colors that I used there, so I don't have to buy any more. Added two more colors, and I'm going to do Hey Pumpkin, which was our stitch quarterly design in Mania already picked the threads and I'm going to stitch on the new tr Prairie Cork 20 count fabric. From Stephanie Boron, when learning stitch in hand, is it easier to learn on 14 Ada cloth? I would. I mean, because that's pretty easy. Most people can see it. Mm -hmm. It'll be stiffer than an even weave. And for me, keeping the stiffness is good. Like for me, not that's for it. everybody. That's what I'm learning on and it, it is working, I think. <laughs> From Deanna Lanker, do you stitch dark colors first or light colors, or do you think it matters? Okay, so I saw this question asked on Priscilla and Chelsea's channel this weekend, and Priscilla said it doesn't matter. She does whatever. 
Chelsea said she sometimes does light, sometimes doesn't, doesn't matter. So for me, I try 90% of the time to do my white first. Now, I don't do the entire piece white like I did with that Be My Valentine. That one I did just because I thought that was fun. And there's a lot of white. I do try to go lighter to darker when I can. So, but I'm a little bit um, particular about my stuff. Um, but I think it really, it depends on what kind of personality you are and what works best for you. And I honestly say, do whatever works for you. For me, I try to do white first. Priscilla and Chelsea don't. Do whatever you want to do. You don't have to worry about like, but that's what I do. From Sarah Elwood, is the color in cotton thread a little bit variegated at all? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And each company is different. Um, and each skein you get is gonna be different. I saw an argument on Facebook this week about that. Not on my page, but on someone else's page. And it is hand dyed. So it's, so basically somebody had bought a skein and then, I mean, you know, they bought another skein and they looked totally different. One was like green and one was blue and they were complaining about it. And so I totally get it, but um, that's, it's hand dyed and it's a natural process. It's a person behind it actually dyeing it like in a bathtub or a tin you're never going to get the same exact thing two times but yes it's hand dyed why did i go off on that tangent who knows sorry oh, that's a good one from tina rooten will the prim and proper pattern be available as a pdf anytime soon we international customers have long rate <clears throat> long waits for the postal service plus covid plus snowstorms mm-hmm. yes prim and proper. Yeah. what day Okay, we're going to look up date right now. Yes, Floss Whisper is researching. And from Jen Weiss about the Bowen needles, how sharp are these? I'm having trouble poking my fingers with the ones I've been using. They're oh, sharp. No. So they are much sharper, pointier at the end than, and that's why I feel like I can get it through the hole mm-hmm. because I feel like the tip of the John James, I wasn't really able to bend it and get it in the hole. Um, but it is definitely going to poke you. Mm-hmm. Y- you might poke yourself. And what size needle would you recommend for 16 count? So that is what I'm talking about, 16 okay. count. I might have said 18 count on accident, but I would use size 28. Now, having said that, Cheryl, who is an expert stitcher who works here, she uses size 24. So again, personal preference, because I was struggling with doing the January cottage of the month and just taking forever to get my needle through on the 28 and she said oh well I use the size 26 so everyone's different and she uses a hoop I stitch in hand she probably stitches in a chair I usually stitch in my bed I mean everybody does everything different so that one I would say is very subjective Mm -hmm. and the prim and proper pdf will be online at fat quarter shop as a pdf May 17th all right um, Lori Taylor, is there a right side and back side to all cloths for cross stitching or just the hand dyed fabrics? I'm using Cosmo Ada 16 count and I can't really tell the difference to determine which is front and which is back. So for, there is not a front and back unless it's dyed or screen printed, screen printed, screen printed. There's definitely a wrong side. Okay. Let me find that group, that piece of fabric that's right there. The dyed. Okay. Thanks. Mm-hmm. So this one is Witchell. And it's hand dyed. So that's one side. That's the other. So they do look different. And before you start, I would just pick what side you like. You know, do you want lighter? Do you want darker? But if you're working with Cosmo, that's just straight Ada. There's no right side, no wrong side. As far as I know, I just start stitching. I would say in the wise words of Jocelyn Ung, if you can't tell, I can't tell. Oh yeah, (laughs) she's like, yeah. She's very laid back. (laughs) All right, from Julie Weisinger Pickett, are you supposed to start stitching on a square with a vertical thread? Does it really matter if you have odd and even numbers of stitches? I stitch from bottom left to top right for my X and then bottom right to top left you can stitch any way you want i'm not sure i'm even answering the question i think 
like so let us know if that did not answer your question please because i think that's what they were asking but you can do your x any way you want you just want throughout your project to keep it consistent and from so at your style hi kimberly good morning how do you maintain the stiffness of the fabric while working mine's all soft once i'm done with my project so i mostly use fabric flare and witchell witchell is my favorite because it is stiff fabric flare is also stiff and it stays stiff i don't know i keep it in my hand like this like when i stitch i'll show you i'm gonna take the needle out so i don't poke myself this is what i do this is witchell something i'll have to look up what it is this is how I stitch. And then I put it in my hand and I stitch. It stays stiff, I don't know. I don't do anything special to it. But um, I, like where I need to start right here, I'll just roll it up until I get to that spot. Now if I need to roll this side, since I'm right-handed, I will roll this and put it with a wonder clip. From crafting a planned life, are the needles Kimberly uses having a sharper blunt end? Bowen is sharper than Pat Carson. So I have decided I'm going to use Pat Carson size 24, Bowen size 26. Bowen is harder for us to get as a store. If we're sold out, it will be a couple months before we get it. That is made in France, ships from France. And when I order, I have to order in huge quantities because when it comes in, it's gone. Does that make sense? So Bowen is harder for us to get and is on order. I think we might be out, but it's because it comes from France on a boat to the United States. Yeah. And Julie Wessinger Pickett says, to follow up on my question, uh, asking about the vertical thread, uh, she says, I guess it's meant for even weave. Start with a vertical woven thread to keep the thread from slipping underneath a horizontal thread. I don't know the answer, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe if you put a comment when the video's over, yes. Ashley can ask Cheryl, because she yes. stitches on linen and she's an expert. I always start with the loop method, even when I'm using hand dye. And I know you're not supposed to, but I do. So. Yes, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because she does work on linen. She also works on even weave and she will, she's really nice and does Ada for us when we ask her to, even though she does not like Ada. Oh, that's funny. But she does it for us. I never knew she didn't like it. Oh no, she does not. That's funny. Oh, we had a super chat for $10 from Sally Johnson. And Sally says, happy Wednesday, Lily and Kimberly. Morning from snowy Cape Cod. Thank you. Oh, I heard it snowing everywhere. It's so cold today. It's cold. Today. And I have to be a taxi. That's what I call myself, taxi. One day I'm gonna show up with a, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna get like a magnet for my car that's like Emma's taxi, just to make her mad because she's 13 and it's easy to make a 13 year old mad but yeah my nanny is getting the uh, vaccine today i signed mm -hmm. her up to get the vaccine and yes. so i gotta run home and take emma to dance mm -hmm. and so um yeah i call it the emma, emma taxi i should just oh i should get a license plate that's e-m-m-a-t-a-x-i that would be so funny she would be so mad and i would that would i could totally do that that would be so funny i would totally do it too because i'm crazy Okay, so I'm going to take a break, and Lily is going to show you her monthly markings. Yay! Yay! Going to scoot that over. Squeaky, squeaky. All right. Hello, everyone. Going to take a seat here. I always forget how comfy this chair is. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Lily, uh, voice behind the camera, video person here at Fat Quarter Shop as a lot of you know. Today I'm going to be showing you monthly markings, I've also got some other stuff that I'm excited to show you guys with my stitching. So this was my February monthly markings, uh, I used Breeze 14 count vintage cloth by Lori Holt, I am using All Gentle Arts, two strands. I am using Pat's Favorites needles. Uh, I have switched back to the size 28 actually uh, because I found that half the time I wanna use the hoop, this five inch tension hoop, 
and half the time I want to try to stitch in hand. So the 28 has been a lot nicer for stitching in hand, so I just use that one to not switch back and forth with the different size needles. I was also using this uh, Just My Type enamel needle minder because I am collecting needle minders. And it was so cute, and it goes with the, the February Valentine's theme. I did use pink masking tape all the way around here. Um, I am aware I can serge it or use a zigzag stitch, uh, but because I fixed this up at work and we don't have a machine that does a zigzag stitch here, I just used the masking tape and I thought it looked cute anyways. And then for my threads, the ones that I switched this time around, like I said, I'm using All Gentle Arts, so I changed Lancaster Red to Claret, Molasses to Black Licorice, Antique Rose to Clover, Maple Syrup to Moonlit Path, and Straw Bonnet to Peach Ice Cream, which this is the peach ice cream, I think. So yummy. So cute. Loved it. I love the names of all these things when they sound yummy. All right. So that's the first thing I want to show you. Second thing is I have a finish. Woo! So excited. Um, so this is the Favorite Brew pattern. It is a free downloadable uh, by Hands On Design on our website, part of the Scary Apothecary. And I started stitching this on Halloween way back when. It was supposed to be experimental because it was my first time using any sort of like fancy floss um, and just in bits of it. So I used a mixture of fancy floss, DMC, both weeks dye works, um, color and cotton, I think. No, classic color works, sorry. Classic color works, um, and I changed a lot of the colors, and I have them listed up here, and Ashley also has a link to all of them, um, so that I don't have to read all of them off. I stitched this on 14 count malted milk. I did use. It's a free pattern, can I? Oh, it's free. I'm so good. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> no, I'm not that mean. I promise. I don't break copyright law. Um, I'm very, very particular about copyright. No, it's a free pattern. Um, so I, for this one, I did use the size 26 needle. As you can see, I have red masking tape on this one, and this top part was already um, kind of finished off. And like I said, I used a mix of floss, but I have an idea of how I'm going to finish this, but I'm going to keep that secret until I actually do it because I need to figure it out. So that's that one. And then this is something I'm going to start working on as part of the Be Mine Stitch Along. I'm going to be stitching Puppy Love. Oh my gosh. And I'm so excited. I am... I, I talked with Ye old Floss Whisperer about this. I'm gonna change, because I have two puppies, so I'm gonna change the colors so they're a little more like my puppies that I have. So I'm excited to figure that out. But most of the other colors, um, I'm gonna be using the Calls for Colors. And I think I will be stitching on the chalkboard 14 Count Ada, because I bought that a while back, so I have that in my stash. And yeah, that is what I have to show you guys today. Yay! Are there any questions? People love your shirt. Oh, I thank you. Really it's from ThreadUp. The shirt's from ThreadUp. The earrings are for Forever 21. Yes, yes. <laughs> so for ThreadUp, do you mail it back? So for ThreadUp, I do the goodie box. I think that's what it's called, which is kind of like your Nordstrom trunk club. And so I try the things on, and then I only pay for what I keep and mail oh, it okay. back. But you can also just like go on there and see something you like and buy it. And they, like, they have a decent return policy if you don't like it, because it is an online thrift store so sometimes a size 16 means different things for different uh, manufacturers good all right thank you everyone throw my mask back on do 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 Woo. Oops. thank you Ooh. so we're going to continue with a uh, sew by row i'm having so much fun with this so this is a pattern by Lori Holt, and I had more time in January than I will in February, so that's why I have more done. So we're doing this by row. We're on, this is the row we just did, and Lily will show you where we're at. One so we are on, yeah, the iron is done today, and then we're going to move to the spools. Now, Stitchy Talk next month will be the first Tuesday of the month, and I'm going to show back stitches. And all these back stitches that are in there, I'm going to show you Cheryl's. And then with mine, she did two strands, and Lori always does two strands with back stitches. I might do one, one strand. And I will kind of show you how I determine that on Stitchy Talk because I haven't decided. So my goal this week is to fill this in 
what I did is I knew when I started here in January that I just, I'm not going to have as much time because of Be Mine. So, as I did this color, I started filling in here. This color filling in. So, this week I only have one, two, three, four spools to do, which is um, like 100 stitches. So, that's awesome. And then um, I'll probably fill in down here too so that I'm done. Let's see. I stitched on 14 count shadow by lori holt we are sold out but we will have more she's she's making more and i use the call for dmc and i'm going to show you what lori is working on she is stitching on fabric from her stash no she's not she is stitching on prairie 20 count cork linen which is a brand new cloth that she came out with and she is using the called for dmc she's stitching over one and I am going to be using that cloth in Mania for Hey Pumpkin, and I'm going to stitch over two. And um, when she's done with her sample, she will um, finish it and mail it to us so that we can show you up close how over one looks because I don't do over one, and she will be nice enough to share it with us. And, of course, she has her cute little needle minder on there. And one thing that I think is pretty cool is, okay, we're going to talk about floss flowers right now after this and if you look at how she does her floss flowers can you show real quick okay that's how she does her floss flowers and this is how i do my floss flowers so let me know if there's any questions on sew by row before i go ahead and show my little floss flower demonstration are there any questions There's a few, but I think we should get to them later. Okay. Okay. So, front camera real quick, and I'm going to show you this. So, this is all inspired by Lori right here. So, I like we talked about, I went to the container store, and I bought these. They're called cracker jars, and it was $5.99. And I thought, okay, that's cute. And then I went to Michael's, and I bought four different trims. I literally glued this on with no i didn't i used double-sided sticky tape i used this tape and taped the, the whatever this is called down what is it called ribbon and then i just overlapped it on the back i did iron that down and then i just taped it down and then denise painted the lids for me and then i bought these knobs at Tuesday morning and Kevin put them on. This is all Lori Holt's idea. She is going to do a video on it. Now her jars are gonna look totally different. So she'll probably have different um, ribbon, you know, she'll probably have this, um, will be similar. Now these buttons, I'm gonna show you on the top camera. I don't own a hot glue gun or anything like that because that would be dangerous because I don't know how to use it. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to try to stick these buttons down. These are Lori Holt's cute little buttons. And I have all of her buttons. I don't know what jar this is from, but I just picked some out and I used some applique glue. I think it's like Sue Daily applique glue. And I just put a ton of glue. You can see it's coming up through the hole. And I left it sitting down and I went and took a shower and came back and it worked. And I was like about to cry because I was so excited that what I did worked. So I literally used tape and glue and a glue gun would probably last much longer but i don't own one but the reason i'm showing you this is subscribe to lori holt's youtube channel which is lori holt in a couple of weeks she's going to show you some different ideas on decorating jars this is her idea that i got from her i did not come up with this on my own i mean i did come up with the ribbon but i mean without her i wouldn't have done any of this but i wanted to answer a question that we got on the floss tube channel and I believe the question was how do you keep your floss flowers from unwinding so this is how I have mine and I tuck it under so I'm gonna show you what I do I'm gonna take it all the way off and put it all the way back on and Lily Denise and I are filming a video on organizing cross stitch and it will be releasing in March and I will go into more detail about how I store and which flosses are in here 
So when I start with, this is DMC. So when I start with DMC, I cut my skein into eight sections. So this is, I'm, I'm sure this is something that I have left over. And you saw that Lori does hers like this or something like that. She does hers different than me. I don't even know how she does it. But that, you know, Lori does the star. We'll show the image real quick. I don't know how Lori does it, but that's how Lori does hers. This is how I do mine. And Lori designed these. These are actually a product by Lori. What I do is I wind it really tight and I try to just cover up the start. When I get to the back or to the end, I use these scissors and I just pop it under. And that's how I keep them in my jar. So when you look in my jar, there should all be kind of neat. I mean, and I don't, once I put them in here, like this one came out right there. So I'll just tuck it in with my scissors. So that's, but yeah, I bought these at Tuesday morning. And the only reason I didn't get them at Home Goods is um, there was a line to get in Home Goods, and I was like, "Home girl's not gonna stand in a line to go in Home Goods." Sorry, that was my joke. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so we're in the middle of another sew along because you know we love sew alongs here. This one is the Stronger Together cross stitch pattern, and it celebrates Black History Month, which is February. And all of the proceeds for this pattern and the quilt pattern are gonna be given to UNCF, which is mission is to increase the total number of African-American college graduates. We're on week two. So you can see week one was the outside, week two is the inside. And Ashley is stitching this for us. Yay, Ashley. Yay, Ashley. So what she did is she did the top of the stars to make sure that it fit. And then she came back in and finished the stars like the bottom of the stars. And then um, when she finishes hers, we'll show it. Um, we do have the pieces on set that I will grab and show you real quick. This one right here is a frame that has an insert that goes down, like a photo frame. We finished it with sticky board and batting and put it on top so that you don't see that inside. So this is just a plain frame from Michaels. And this cross stitch actually has two pieces. This is the second piece. So you could do uh, more quilty or more statement. And both of these are fabric flare. And we will announce how much we are donating in February, in March. I'm getting all my months off. So let me know if y'all have any questions before I go on to my next stuff. This was from earlier from Grateful, Grateful Grammy. Is there a silk that doesn't leave dye on fabric if you frog? That I know of, no. What I've been using is this double side sticky tape. So if I unfrog, I will put the tape on the top. I'll show you. Let me have Ashley. She won't mind. So this is what I do. Say I unstitched right here. I put this down and just keep doing this. And then if it doesn't come out, I swipe it. But I don't do just the top. I do the back several times and then swipe it. And this sticky tape it's not sticky tape, what is it? It's just scotch double-sided tape and it's strong. We have it in the Amazon shop, mm -hmm. but it is the only sticky tape. It's not sticky tape, but that's what I'm calling it. It's the only tape I can get to work because if you use just regular tape that you use for like office supplies, it does not have the stickiness of this and it won't pull the thread out. But that's what I do on silk. So for example, when I'm doing stitches from the heart and I unfrog, it does leave more of a residue than like a DMC. I just use this tape. Mm -hmm. This tape goes everywhere with me, even in my car. Mm -hmm. It's in the glove box. 
I have extra glove box. I have a glove box that has scissors and um, tape. And I will tell you a funny story. On Saturday, either Saturday or Sunday, I can't remember which. Emma had danced both days, and I we live really far from the studio. We live really far from everything. But I'm not gonna drive 30 minutes, drive home, stay home 30 minutes, drive back, and then drive back. So I just sit in my car and work or whatever I need to do. Like this Saturday, I went to the framer, dropped off the stitch card H's to get framed. Um, but when I was in the car, I dropped my scissors. So I said, Christopher, I need some scissors. So he knew exactly where my scissors were. So even if you, um, that's why I have them in there. So that if I have drop them, I don't have to get up. I can just get the other pair. Okay, so I wanted to remind you, in a couple of weeks, we will be starting the Serendipity Charity Make-A-Wish, and we will be releasing the first pattern that's free on March 1st, and so it's going to be twice a month, and we're going to go by the row, so this will be row one. I will be stitching on navy 14 count by Witchell, and I'm going to use the... Weeks Dye Works Thread Pack. We also have a DMC Thread Pack, and so far we've raised $23,700. Thank you to everyone who has donated. Yay. Kevin and I, along with Mark Dunn, will be donating $30,000, so we're at $52,000. And we're gonna try to get to $100,000, which will grant wishes. The money goes directly to Make-A-Wish in Central South Texas. Now I'm going to show you my framed finishes that Priscilla did for me. I know, it's so cute, right? And so I want to let you know if you have specific questions on this. She showed all of these and talked about them on her video Saturday. Her and Chelsea's channel is called Stitching with the Housewives. And she also did a blog post at priscillas2000.blogspot.com. And thank you to Priscilla for finishing these. This is Rudolph and Mr. Mr. Claus, and I did this during my December stitching. What was that called? Jolly Housewives. Jolly Housewives, sorry. I'm like, I know it's called something. So this is a tray, and she, this is, yeah. I'm not gonna pretend I know, I just know that it's awesome. So this is my first one that she did. My second one, you'll have to see from the front camera. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you a little story. <laughs> so, she showed this. Okay, this is a bucket. It's like a, and it had two Santa Clauses. And I was like, oh my gosh, are you sending me the Santa Clauses? I was so excited. She's like, Kimmy, you bought those for me for Christmas. I didn't even know I bought them because I don't know. I just know she liked like studio something, mm -hmm. studio something. What is it called? Department 54 or department something. Ooh. That's how much I know about it. But anyway, so I got on department 56. So I got online and um, bought me a Santa. So it was so cute because Kevin loves Santa. So anyway, this is their pattern from the Punch Needle Winter Magazine. It's right here. Now, you're supposed to do this bottom part. Now, I didn't do the bottom part because I didn't like it. I didn't do the bottom part because I started in the wrong spot and didn't have enough. So this looks, fa this looks fabulous. And this is the Priscilla's Pretty Plaids. And I love it, it looks so good. And I'm gonna buy the other Santa Claus that goes in here when I can find it because it was out of stock. But how embarrassing is that, that you text someone and say, oh, are you gonna send me those Santa Claus? I was so confused. Oh. I'm such an idiot sometimes. That's funny. Yeah, it's funny for you, but it was not funny for me because I was embarrassed. Mm. Okay, so this is Santa Claus is coming to town, also by Stitching with the Housewives. And I did this as part of J Jolly Housewives. And so this is Priscilla's Pretty Plaids. These are three vintage trims, or actually these two are vintage trims, and then the black is just a rick rack. This is a mailbox from, it's on the back, let's see, Hobby Lobby seasonal section. And then obviously she added all of this, it's so awesome. So I just wanna go home and like decorate my house for Christmas, and it's not Christmas. 
But yes, I was so excited about these. And then the next one, oh my gosh, this is like fabulous. This is mm. the December Trucking Along. So as you can see, I finished mine as one piece instead of two. This is how Priscilla and Chelsea finished theirs into two pieces, so top and bottom. And she got this at Home Goods, and it's, look, I can oh. store stuff in it. It's a book. So I'm so excited. I didn't ever see this at Hobby Lobby. So I'm so excited. Hobby Lobby hasn't had as much stuff as they used to for finishing. And then my previous finish is right here. This one I did this summer. It's the Volume Rump. Volume one cross stitch alphabet by Fat Quarter Shop. And in the back of the pattern, we show you how to do this. Mm. And we have a video. Yes. It's called Cross Stitch Alphabet Framing the Cross Stitch Alphabet Sampler. And so we just took a frame and we added some fabric on the, it's all in the video. So I want to show that. And our club feature, this one's pretty heavy. Our club feature for today is Prim Stitch Series Number Eight by Lori Holt. So I stitched this last year, like in the fall, and Carrie painted it. Mr. Honey, that's his name. Um, Lori's husband painted it and distressed it. These are her Prim Fabric Collection. This is her Vintage Trim Lace or Be Cute Natural Lace. And I stitched on the prim 25 count using that same RF loss box that we showed in the beginning. And if you're in the club, your pattern shipped last week and we're gonna release the pattern to the public at the end of this week for everyone not in the club. Speaking of Lori, we are, this is her take along project bag that she made a few years ago with us. And it's like a little backpack you can put your cross stitch in. It says eat, sleep, stitch, repeat. Okay, we have some left. We're putting them on flash sale today, 32% off. And once they're gone, they're gone. We're not remaking them. So I just wanted to show you guys that we are at the end of our run on this. And that's kind of how we do our notions is we, you know, we do them and then they live their life. And then we move on to another new item. Mm -hmm. So it's at the end of its life, poor little bag. Oh. <laughs> and so then cute. I'm going to show you some new stuff. So Bunny Bakery arrived, and if you pre-ordered it, it shipped. And we do have the thread pack right here. It's by Priscilla and Chelsea. And then here comes Peter Cottontail. And we will have the thread pack soon. And I will be making this one in April. March, sorry, March. And I'm going to do it in two parts. I'm going to do all the text in one and then I'm going to do the bunny and the flowers and the the next. I'm going to go ahead and leave the colors the same and stitch on chalkboard black. And this is their April trucking along which also arrived at the beginning of this week. So if you're in the club, it shipped. And I will be doing this as four parts in March. I'm going to do the top, a row, a row and a row. So that will be done in March. We also have the Lucky Day PDF that came out Friday. Ooh. And she does talk about how, in her video, if you wanna know how she finishes this, she went into detail Saturday. This one came out today, it's called Carrot Patch. It's also a PDF and it is her second, their second tiered tray tidbits. And she has a brand new tiered tray that I need to go buy because, you know, I like to copy. And, um, Give credit though, I always give credit. It's okay to copy if you give credit. Some people don't give credit, I give credit. Um, but she is showing how to do, um, it's kind of a bigger tiered tray so that more of this stuff will fit and she showed that Saturday. And some other new items, Teresa Kogut just came out with two cross stitches. This one is called You Are Worthy and I think she had this also in Punch Needle. And then this one is Our Humble Homestead. This looks like something Cheryl would stitch, so she will probably stitch it. I'm just guessing. 
And then this is Love is in the Air by Cottage Garden Samplers. And this is a 12 part series and this is part two. And this book we got in because I saw this on a lot of floss tubers. Now I'm not a sampler person. I'm not a motif person. I know nothing about this except that it has different versions of houses and people and so you can make your own sampler basically but i got this because it was in so many floss tubes and we got some requests for it so we got it and this next one i'm so 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 excited so we are going to ask her if we can sell her pdfs and um, we're not sure if we're going to be able to because she hasn't answered yet but i loved this when i saw it because i thought oh my gosh this could go in my in my studio where i sew but i also work mm -hmm. And so I picked thread yesterday with Denise. We picked Gentle Arts. We ordered it and we think we're gonna be able to have a thread pack with it. Of course, I changed the colors to be less green, more aqua, and a little bit brighter. I am going to stitch this on 16 count vintage white. Sorry, antique white. Vintage white, antique white, sorry. Same word, different meaning sorry i couldn't remember so i'm going to stitch it on 16 count so it's going to come out about seven inches square and i'm going to add this to my mania rotation so let me know that's what i have today oh great i had a lot today i'm so excited and i'm excited when i'm done here because i can start stitching for the next week and i have sat down and gone through what i'm going to be stitching in march april and may and of course, uh, needlework market is coming up. Obviously there is no real needlework market. There's gonna be an online needlework market, but this is the time of year where a lot of needlework stores, a lot of needlework designers, cross-stitch designers come out with their designs for the year, like kind of like their big launch of the year. And so when all of that comes out, I will also add some of that to my rotation also. From Kathy Schlosser, will you ever have an even weave fabric of the month club? I don't know. Um, it's kind of hard to get fabric right now. So we're kind of putting off adding any kind of thread or fabric clubs because everyone is so behind that I don't think that I can fulfill the shipment of it. But is it on my radar? Absolutely. From Betty McCary. Uh, please help. I need an Ada cloth to do Christmas baking, please. I use DMC thread. Christmas baking. Okay, what did you say? You need a what? Ada cloth. For Christmas baking. Okay, let me look. What Christmas I think it is time to No. Chris, okay, it's Shannon Christine. I would use Venetian stone. Oh, very cute. And then from Lisa D, do Lori's stitch cards have a classic color work slash DMC conversion? No, they only provide DMC. Okay. Now you could Google classic color works conversion to DMC. You will see charts online. They're not um, sanctioned or authorized by, they're just people's conversions. Um, so you could always try to find something online. So guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for stitching with me with Be Mine. Thanks for purchasing the Stronger Together so that we can donate to UNCF. And I will see you guys next week. Bye, everyone.